Years ago, the dining room of this 55-year-old home was renovated, but now it needs to be updated. Fluted molding looks good when it's used appropriately, and this was not the spot. I've been helping homeowners improve their home for a lot of years. They think it's intimidating, but it actually it can be a lot of fun. And we're here to help. Here you go. <laughs> Dad's the expert, but I've learned a few things along the way. Practical, realistic home improvement information is what today's homeowner is all about. Andy and Liddell recently bought the 60s era home in need of some updates. There's a lot about this house they like. We're getting the house painted on the exterior in a few weeks, which that's one of the things this house needed the most was some curb appeal, but it helped us be able to get it for a good price point. Their son, Sam and Parker, enjoy the outdoor spaces, and Lee Dale and Andy love the openness that's been added to the old floor plan. But nobody's crazy about the dining room. This house had some updates that we were excited about, but we also knew there were some things we needed to do to kind of make it our own. We anticipated it was gonna take a little elbow grease to get it how we wanted it. So we've been talking to them about some solutions. We've been in the house about three months now. Well, I love all this openness yeah. right here. Yeah, Everybody wants that nice open, open space. Did, did you paint these walls? We didn't, I, if okay. you could tell the poor painting down there, oh, wow. I did they not paint like these walls. They look like I painted them. Wow. <laughs> so we would like to get this room repainted, mm -hmm. maybe a lighter color okay, to kind sure. of flow with the rest of the space. Mm -hmm. And then a friend of mine did some wainscoting. I don't know much about it, but I thought that could be pretty. In yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. lots of different ways work. to do it. Sure, well, there is a lot of different ways, but a lot of times it'll cause a room to kind of close in a little bit okay. because generally wood is used, yeah. which is good and durable, but I thought about something here. That's nothing more than applied molding mm -hmm. over drywall. Huh. Who knew? So if you want to paint it all white like that yeah. or a light color, right. exactly. then we can put chair rail up around 36 inches, then put the molding glued right to the drywall, and then paint a couple coats on it. It'll look just like that. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. I also noticed some unique molding over yes. here. Um, as soon as I walked in this house and I saw this fluted molding and some kind of old-fashioned bullseye, I knew that had to go. And Danny, while I've got you in here, I've mm -hmm. got one thing I wanted to get your opinion on. Okay. All right, sure. Follow me up back. Yeah. All right, uh -oh. great. Hmm. <laughs> and now the table or the leaves, do you want to paint them? Or well, do you one of the it? things okay. we loved most about the house was this deck yeah. and backyard. Yeah, this is nice. Plenty of room out here. Mm -hmm. One thing I've always wanted, though, is an outdoor TV. Oh, football time. Football huh? time. I figured this is a perfect spot for it. You know, from a from a novice point of view, it seems something would go here, sure, but I wanted yeah. to get your expert opinion well, about it. We actually could build it out of the same wood like this. We'll do some waterproofing on it, okay. but it can blend in. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, yeah. But, but you have to tell your wife that you're doing this. Um. So outside, we'll add a little entertainment to an already ample deck. Inside, we'll add wainscoting and a more appropriate light fixture to the dining room. We'll convert the kitchen doorway to a proper cased opening, replace the fluted trim around the pass-throughs, and remove the oversized granite bar that extends out into the living room. Once we clear out the china cabinet, the furniture, and protect the floors, we begin deconstructing. Danny says, Andy, can you hold this? It'll just be a second. Then a few seconds turns into five minutes. I just can't really understand, I tell you what. Arms are burning. Just something not lining up right or something. So Dad, was that chandelier as heavy as it looks? You need to rest your arms, Andy? Maybe in just a couple minutes. I don't know, <laughs> ask Andy. <laughs> All right, I got your nice fresh blade here. Don't cut yourself, but what you do right. want to cut is you see right there, that caulking, how it touches the wall. Yep. If you'll just score it, that way we hopefully okay. can keep from damaging that drywall as much, and then we can take this classic fluted molding down. That fluted molding looks good when it's used appropriately, and this was not the spot. You just want to say, why? Oh, I know. So this is what happens to everybody sometimes, where you're just trying to take one simple door stop down to make this a legitimate cased opening, and now everything's falling apart here. It's actually a split jam. I thought this was one piece of wood. It's two different ones. It's about to become just one piece. What are the chances of having a split jam like we have here? 
<laughs> 50-50, that's pretty good. Split jam, 50-50. <laughs> that's pretty good. Was that a joke? Yeehaw! I was so excited to see that thick molding come off. It just didn't flow with our house. I was just thrilled to see it going out of here. Whenever you're making an electrical repair around the house, it's always important to turn off the power at the main electrical panel. But how do you know the power's off at the circuit you're working on? Well, if there's light in the room, well, that's easy, right? You flip off the breakers and light goes off, the power is turned off. But in this case, I'm going to be changing out an outlet that's down the hall near the front door. So I plugged in a trouble light. Now all I need to do is flip off the breakers until the light goes off. These should be labeled but they're not. So we're gonna just find it this way. There you go, that's uh, number five. So we know that the breaker number five operates that sends power to the outlet. So now we know that it's off and it's safe to work on. But what happens if you're working on a device, an outlet or a switch that's on the far end of the house or upstairs? What you need is a radio. So you just plug in the radio, turn the volume all the way up so you can hear it, and then do the same thing. Start turning off breakers. There you go. The music just died, and I know the power to that outlet is off, and it's safe to work on. We're helping Andy and Lee Dale update their entertaining spaces. And the next thing to go is an oversized granite bar. Someone sitting here in a, in a chair trying to eat, and someone going from... Right, <laughs> or even just standing there, as right. you can tell, yeah, nobody can get by. Look, it should be just glued down, just wiggling a little bit. Push down off. Yeah, there you go. Right. Yeah, we can, roll, we can roll it right on out right now. Make sure you got a good handle on it. Okay, does it look any better to you at this point? I mean, it's coming. <laughs> well, it has to get a little ugly before it starts looking better again. Good news is all the demolition's done. So we got that taken right. care of. Um, but because of the width of that other molding is right. wider, than what we're putting in. We're gonna have this real defined paint line right here. Mm -hmm. If you will take this and just go along here and just, that's Smooth all you're out. doing. That's done right there. That way, see, I can mud from here to here right. and we're done. Okay. You know, it's always fun giving a homeowner a chance to try something they never have, especially when you can relate it to something like baking. Doesn't that look like a nice creamy vanilla icing? It does, cream cheese. And now I'm hungry. You're going to pull it just across there as thin as you can. Good luck, I'll, I'll be out in the truck. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'll be here with you. <laughs> there you go. I'm a natural. Yeah, see how it just evens it all out. The trim will come down a little ways. Oh yeah, to heck with that real estate business. <laughs> you got a job for me? With Lee Dale's work ethic, I just might. Good help is hard to find. I'm working. Homeowner working, Chelsea's ordering lunch. Ordering lunch is always the most important job on the job. While I finish the drywall repair, Chelsea gets started laying out the chair rail. All right, Lydia, when we get the chair rail up and nail it, we want to nail into the studs behind the wall. Okay. So it helps to go ahead and mark them. There should be one on either side of this, so I have a little cheater, a stud finder. There. I could have used one of these when I was dating. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great if we just had a scanner Good one. It would have been so much easier that way. It might be a tight fit, so go ahead and put your corner in. Okay. And it's going below the line. Okay. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Oh, I gotta shoot. Are you putting it in anywhere certain? Just in this in the middle. thinner area. Okay. Right underneath where I marked. There you go. It's just amazing how some simple molding can dress up a room. Both the chair rail and the one by material I'm using to finish the cased opening were pre-primed when we got them at the store. Well, by and pre-primed, it saves a step because once you get it in place, you're going to need to put a coat or two of paint. It beats the heck out of putting a coat of primer than two of paint. And it's just a step saver. Just push it against it and shoot. You know, when Danny first handed me the nail gun, I was a little, little gun shy, but um, after the first one, I was a lot more comfortable with it. Good? Yeah, that's good. With the cased opening complete and the chair rail done, I can mock up a molding panel for Andy and Lee Dale. It'll be straighter than that. <laughs> I know it's not level, but it's just about proportion as far as the sizes of it. So tell me the truth, what do you think? Is that what you had in mind? Yeah, no it is. It I looks like a it. lot different now because 
it's got blue back there. Sure. Yeah. And when it's all white, white, the wall will then look like actual paneling. While I'm cutting all the molding we need, Chelsea and Lee Dale start assembling the panels. What is this? That this is think? PVC glue. Huh. But in this wood? This is, it's actually PVC. It's plastic. Okay. And this sets up pretty fast. Using PVC molding is perfect for this application because it's lightweight and when you're trying to nail in those tiny little areas, if you're using wood, it would split. I love hanging out in the paint department because I get so inspired. And there's nothing like picking out a really pretty fresh new color, getting it mixed up, taking it home, and say putting it on a piece of furniture or wherever you want it for that fresh look. But what if you want a weathered look? If you did want to do that before, you had to do it in a couple of different steps, took a long time, and it, uh, but now you don't have to do that anymore. Verathane has come out with a weathered wood accelerator. Now, how this works is you just want to mix it up, and you want to apply it on a bare piece of wood and you just brush it on with a paintbrush with the direction of the wood. Let it sit on there for about 30 minutes to an hour. If you want to lighten it, just take a cloth and wipe it off. If you want to darken it, just add another layer. Now, once you get it to the tint that you like, go ahead and put a clear coat on the top of it to protect it. Now, this will vary depending upon the species of wood that you choose because it's going to act with the tannins. So if you use pine or oak or maple, you're going to get different looks, but you're going to love that weathered look every time. After just one day of work, Andy and Lee Dale's dining room is looking much different. And overnight, they painted the upper half of the walls to brighten things up considerably. All right, so to make sure everything's spaced properly, we have the spacer. And okay. if you can hold that sure. up against the chair rail, okay. and then maybe put your fingers on the yeah, panel. Yeah, tell me when. Using that spacer block at the top really saved the day installing those panels. All right, it's perfect. There's so many things about remodeling that have to do with proportion. So it's really hard to come up with a formula is exactly what works, but usually on Wayne's coating, if you balance it between the chair rail and the base, that always works. Right. And then to have a basic average of spacing all the way around the room, even if it's not exactly the same, that seems to work as well. And we're using adhesive to hold it up, okay. and we'll just nail it to tack it on there while the adhesive dries. Using the adhesive to attach it to the wall just gave it a lot cleaner look. And all you needed, what, was two nails? That's right. That's perfect. While the ladies keep installing panels, I get Andy started pressure washing the wall on the deck before we build his TV cabinet there. All right, we got Andy busy out there. That should work out pretty well. How's everything going here? It's going really well. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't make these uh, cased openings uh, look a little bit better. Good. The horizontal piece at the bottom of each opening will be a 1x8. I'm using a router to soften the top edges and cutting notches on either end before fitting each board in place. You know, this makes so much more sense than having that big overhang like this. At least they'll be able to pass through here. You can still put a plate of food here if you need to, but this is going to tie all of this trim in a lot better than it was before. Once I get the other horizontal pieces in place, Andy joins me to begin wrapping the vertical surfaces. Just like you're doing with your hand, okay. and just even it out. Okay. It's still showing a little bit of crack yeah. there, is that okay? Yeah, the trim's gonna go over it, and okay. we definitely got a little caulking to do because okay. it's just the walls are not the same width. Perfect. By the time we get the trim around these openings, Chelsea and Lee Dale are ready to paint. So, Chelsea, how come we're using this little roller? Instead of the one you used last night? Yeah, the bigger one. It's foam. And so since we're trying to make this look like wood, we want it to be as smooth as possible. It's so exciting to see the lighter color coming to life as the darker color was going away. So, Andy, you see what we did, right? We got out of painting. Whew, that's a good thing. I know it. For I know. everybody, We, we can probably. stretch this out yeah. the rest of the day. Yeah, I'm good with that. <laughs> okay, so positioning of this, we know we want to be in the center of this wall, right? So everybody wants to see a plan, a drawing of what I'm going to build for the TV cabinet. Well, when Danny and I first started talking about the TV cabinet, um, I really didn't know what to expect. You know, he had a plan up here. It's all in my mind. I'm making it up as I go. It's a scary place to be. 
We're using two by sixes around the plywood to form the box of the cabinet before we hang the TV mount inside the space. Early the next morning, we begin making the doors by layering rough sawn fence boards in the same pattern used on the fence. Meanwhile, Chelsea and Liddell are prepping the dining room table for paint. So remind me again, how come we taped up these dowels? Just to prevent too much paint buildup from getting there and keeping them from making contact. So they'll right. be able to fit in mm -hmm. when we're done. Exactly. Okay, great. I noticed Lee Dale was watching me pretty closely when I was using the paint sprayer, so I got the hint that she wanted to use it too. You know, anytime you're trying to put a television or any kind of electronics outside, it has to stay dry. So I have the cabinet, for the most part, completed, but a real important part is this. This is a peel and stick type of roofing material that you use around the starter edge and around some valleys in, in different roofing applications. Here, I'm going to apply it like this, stick it down really nice, then put a little strip there to make it a little more decorative. And then using some of the scrap pieces I have left over from building the TV cabinet, I'll build a cute little roof just like this. It'll help shed the water and make it look pretty attractive. I think it's coming together pretty well. I didn't exactly know how things were working, but I, you know, I, I obviously knew that he knew. It started to make sense as, as we went further along. It, it's it's going to be perfect. It's going to be a perfect piece. Once we put the roof together, Andy applies a coat of stain to the cabinet before we install the TV to complete this project. I love the chandelier that Lee Dale had in the dining room before, but it was so big that it contributed to the dining room feeling so small. So I picked out two chandeliers that are different styles, but the appropriate size, so we'll see which one she picks. All right, Lee Dale, we have two different fixtures to choose from, so I thought I'd have Dad hold them kind of in place. Okay. Maybe we can get an idea. A little more modern, kind of ties in the kitchen. Yeah. That's pretty. Okay, that's one mm -hmm. choice. Rectangular kind of fashion here. Okay. I think I'm going to go with the circular. It kind of ties in the, some of the traditional in here along with the modern. I think so. Okay, so one other option there would be Chelsea. Oh, yeah, the ceiling medallions. Okay. <laughs> She doesn't like it. Wow. <laughs> Let's see. This is the great frisbee. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dad. I was going to use that in my house. The previous owners of this house had updated the floor plan by creating pass throughs and removing doors, but they didn't do us any favors with the details. The trim around the pass through was all wrong. The granite bar was too big for the space, and the paint job in the dining room was poorly done. Plus, the dark color and the oversized chandelier made the room feel smaller than it actually was. Now, all the areas flow together. The lighter color on the walls brightens everything up, and the applied molding wainscoting we added lends a touch of elegance to the dining space while the new trim around the pass-throughs and cased openings deliver the clean lines we needed at those transitions. Plus, replacing the granite bar with a simple piece of 1x8 has given space back to the living room. Inside, we spent just under $600 on materials, and just outside the back door, the new TV cabinet we created for about $100 offers plenty of entertainment on the spacious deck. It's amazing to see what just adding a little bit of the molding, how it dressed up that space. Looks great, clean, open. The living room's more open now, the dining room feels more open, and I'm just amazed how much more open the room feels. It really looks nice. Just think about it, using some simple fence boards that are very inexpensive to create something that's going to allow these homeowners to use their deck a lot more. And then some stock moldings to make this dining room look this much better. And of course, the paint always makes a difference. And for Chelsea and I, working with happy homeowners that really dig in and help, that makes it all worthwhile. I hope you enjoyed seeing this week's show, and I hope you were able to pick up a few things you can use at your house. I'm Danny Lipford. We'll see you next week here on Today's Homeowner. about the jig.
Be sure to join us next week when we help an ambitious homeowner who's bitten off a little more than she can chew as we bring her project in for a landing. 